Hello, welcome back. In this video, we will understand the difference between list and numpy as numpy is the core library for scientific computing in Python. It provides a high performance multidimensional array object and tools for working with arrays. In contrast, lists are efficient general purpose containers, but they have certain limitations as they don't support vectorized operations like element wise addition and multiplication. It's exciting, right? So let's get started. So we have understood the installation process and we have also seen the importance of NumPy in a clear way and we have just initialized by, by creating a simple array. But now let's try to understand the main difference between a NumPy array and a list and why can't we use an array module which is already present in Python. I'll clearly show you a difference and we'll try to understand the difference between list and NumPy. Because basically whenever we see NumPy arrays will have a fixed size at creation unlike Python lists. But make sure because in list we, gonna, we cannot perform some vectorized operations like element wise addition. That means if I create a list like this 1 comma 2 comma 3 and if I do plus with 4 comma 5 comma 6 it doesn't mean that 1 plus 4 2 plus 5 but what is the result both of the values will merge both of the lists will merge into a single list right so generally who why does numpy has become much popular because it is generally whenever we go for these vectorized operations vectorized code is more concise and easy to understand fewer lines of code and is mainly for scientific computing process and it has some broadcasting capabilities and we have so many things when we go with numpy because it is all about supporting object oriented programming approach when we start with n dimensional array right so first let's try to represent array when we use array module right how it is different when we create with numpy so first i can directly use it with because then we'll go for understanding difference between list and numpy array First, let's try to declare with the help of array. So when I declare import array as AR, right, I can alias in any way, it's up to us, right? So that means when I just import it, it is already present. So that means with the help of numpy array, we can create an array format, but why can't we use array? If you're aware of it, it is clear. But if you're not aware, I'll just make it very simple. You need not worry. So first I'll take a variable a is equal to, I've just aliased array as ar. So I'll try to create ar dot and see, it is expecting the type. So ar dot array, ar dot array of, when I throw this, it will clearly return a new array whose items are restricted by type code that is the reason first step i want to clearly differentiate you why can't we use array module why we are going for numpy so first i'll try to define the same list one four five and i'll try to print this because in the previous video when you have seen when we have created an array we just gave np dot array of same list but now when i'm trying to use array module it is asking me array argument one must be unicode character not a list right it is expecting some unicode character and it is google collaborator it will give you a stack overflow link over here because it's all about everything is online in 21st century everything is present but what we are trying to do what i'm trying to tell you is we are trying to make you a path that's where you prefer us and that is the reason you're trying to learn mark my words if you clearly follow you can land yourself into your dream role at least as a python developer or an analyst then you can make your steps towards working as working as business development person or whatever it is that means i need to mention my type code okay so what i'll try to do is i can give any type code which is something like i'll try to give it as p right and i'll just execute once again when i go for it it is telling me that it is bad type code we should follow only such things so it can be i h because we have seen the numpy data types right integer float complex boolean in a similar way happens here that means i should throw any one of this otherwise it is not possible and you see array of 5 comma 145 this is the hectic process when you go for creating arrays by using array module but it is not the, the same thing when you go with numpy right already we have imported it and remember one thing Whenever you're using such kind of Jupyter Notebook environments, once installation, once once we have imported in the beginning, we just need not import it every time. We can directly use NP. This is a very simple difference when you use NumPy array and the array module, right? 
Now let's try to understand the main difference between array and the list. Right? That's my clear intention. That's what I would like to make you understand. So first we need to understand the difference between list and the numpy array. Then it would be easier for us. So difference between difference between list and numpy array because we are defining it in the format of uh, n dimensional format it can be anything you need not worry about the dimension of it first let's try to take you know you represent hashtag as comments right so that is fine you can also use a text code over here so I'll just take some l is equal to I'll just give a list 1 4 5 6 or whatever it is so this is your list you already know whether it can be of same type or different type that's a secondary thing so when you go for type of l what happens it will throw you that it is a list you already know this process if you're not aware if you're unaware of it just make it very simple suppose if i define anything so if i change this thing to a string and this is also a list again because a list can contain same type or different type of elements okay very good but how can you add elements inside a list you need to just take out the elements from the list and just throw it right. So I'll just make sure I define 4 into the original position and I'll just try to execute this because you, if you can give print of type of L it is fine because when you give print it will just mention you with the help of class. It mentions you class list that is the reason print is a function it's up to you. Now what I'll try to do is I'll try to take the same list here I'll give arr is equal to I have already imported numpy in the beginning. I just give an np dot. I'll just ask array np dot array of. It is expecting the object. My object would be list here because in the pre next videos we will understand the different ways of creating numpy arrays. But as of now, let's first see. So first, I'll define l here and I'll give arr. So again, you can see that thing. It is in the format of list again, but it is of array of because internally it is storing in the format of n dimensional array okay because when you go for type of arr it is not a list because it, it will be n dimensional array because it can be of one dimension or two dimensions whatever it may be that clearly differs that means if i try to perform any operation like this because l is our list right so now what i'll do is i'll try to do like this can you expect what would be the result? It will be an error obviously because it will tell you it can only concatenate list not an integer. Integer and list cannot be concatenated. So what you will try to do over there? You need to unpack each and every element from it. So what you will do for i in l because l is your list. What you want to do? You want to just make sure add each and every from the every element from that. This is what you do, right? Because that's what we generally learned in Python. If you want to unpack the elements from a list, you go for indexing and you just use star that you have so many things. But you cannot directly add an element to a list that is not possible. But when you go for creating arrays, but when you go for taking an array, you can directly do this. ARR plus 3. So error plus 3 because error is your array you get the same result the result is not changed but internally it is storing in the format of an array where the main difference would be I'll try to show you the amount of time taken for execution and the amount of memory stored that's the key difference which we are trying to understand now right so for the amount of uh, memory memory comparison I'll try to take some range of elements where we can take list or whatever it is it's up to you where i'll try to compare the same thing with numpy array then i'll try to make sure i'll take some list of some million of million elements and i'll try to go for comparing the same thing with numpy arrays then you'll understand why do we prefer numpy arrays over the list it's all about take coming for memory point of and the coming for the time execution so first let's understand the memory comparison how it is trying to store so this is the first difference i try to show memory comparison so because to, to just consider the amount of memory being stored i need to use my inbuilt system module you need not worry about it because it's all about working on some best kind of modules 
So system is basically it will throw you the system specific parameters where it cannot interact with your operating system. That's where system module and OS module differs because it can only communicate with our Python interpreter where we can just make sure some configuration or change the command line arguments. That's what it is, right? Suppose if I go for print of, if I ask sys dot version what does it will throw you it will throw you what is the python version in google collaborate it is 3.7.10 it is default and feb 20 2021 the version it is you need not do this because i just wanted to give you some insight of how do you use this system library right so first i'll try to store elements in the format of whether it is list or you take a range function from 0 to 1000 or any number of elements it's up to you where I'll try to store it in the format of range. So range, because with the help of range, what does that mean? It will start from 0 to n minus 1 because it returns an object that produces sequence of integers. That's you already know. Whether you take list of range, whatever it is, is up to you. Where if I go for print of type of yes, you already know range is a built-in function which will take the elements where I would like to understand what is the amount of memory being stored. Suppose if I give here print of list of range of 1000. Suppose what if I take in this way, what would I get? That becomes class of list. And if I give yes, what happens over there? You could see every element being stored over there. Because we have taken till, how much value we have taken? We have taken till 1000. You could see the elements being stored. It's fine. Whatever type you store, it doesn't matter. So you need not worry whether you store it in the format of list or tuple. Just make sure that you go with the simple concept, right? So when I give yes, it is basically taking range of 0 to 1000. That means it we are trying to compare each and every object element. So for that reason, what I would try to do is I have a method in it. I can use system dot system is our built-in method built-in module where i can use get size so get size will define you get size of individual elements see return the size of object in bytes right it is bytes not bits one byte is equal to eight bits right so you can take any element suppose i take 125 or whatever it is that means it is trying to store how much amount of memory being used for this number of items that is thousand elements or whatever it is right so now let me just try to execute this it is around 28000 bytes of memory for thousand elements okay now i would like to compare the same thing for an array i would just use d is equal to the same phase np dot arrange a range is a function where it will return evenly spaced values. We'll understand the main difference between range and I mean arrange and lin space in the next series of videos. But make sure range is a function when you go for the built-in types. A range is for representing the format of an array. I'll try to go for the same thing. NP dot a range of thousand and if you want to just print off the you could see every element from starting from zero to triple nine. You see the same result. It's not list. Again, don't think this as a list because this will be an n-dimensional array. Because if you go for, because you already taken D, right? So you can just give D dot, I mean, what is the type of D you could expect? So you could see when you go for type of D, it would be basically a num numpy array. So just make it very simple. Don't worry about the, uh, may, don't worry about the things which you are about to learn. You'll learn it, but it will take some time, right? So now I want to see how much of amount of memory is stored for this thousand elements in an array. How would I do that? I have some function which will be working again when we go for checking attributes, which is item size and size. Here length will define the number of items in that container. In the same way, we have another function called as size. So size will define how many number of elements it is thousand. I want to calculate for each and every element, right? So for each and every element, what I could take? I could take item size because item size will define length of one array element in bytes. You could see if it is of float np dot array of one to three float 64, it is eight bytes complex 64. In the same way, if it is of integer, it would be same type. So d dot item size and 
I would like to throw d dot size. How many elements we are having? When I give size, size will throw you the number of elements. Let me just take another cell and show you. Because when you give d dot size, it is around 1000 elements, right? So 1000 into 8. So it is actually when you go for d dot item size, item size it is taking, if it is a float, it will take you 8 bytes in the same way integer, so 8000. And it differs when you're working on your local environment because it is a hosted Jupyter notebook with the Google server. So you may get 8000 bytes. It is 8000 bytes and it is 28000, almost three times lesser, right? 8 is 24. So that is how when you compare memory, it is very much efficient. That is the first difference. The next difference is I would like to throw you some light of how much time it takes, right? Now let's write a piece of code for that where I'll just use some simple techniques of comprehension along with the time because when I want to just make sure I would like to prove numpy arrays take less time for execution. That is the main advantage of numpy arrays. That is the reason as it supports mainly object oriented programming approach. That is the reason people are running towards it. You mark my words. That's the main difference which we have seen and what made us to shift towards numpy array, not the built in Python, not the built, not the available array module in Python. That's the main difference. So numpy arrays takes less time for execution than compared with list. Let me prove it. So for that, I would like to work on time, right? So what I'll try to do first, I'll try to import time because time module will just generally try to specify the amount of time execute time taken for particular piece of execution. So first I'll give import time and I generally want see time execution of Python statement. Google, this will try to provide you suggestion. It's up to you whether you use it or not. Then I'll press enter and I'll just mention start is equal to time dot time. I would like to make sure how much time it is being taken. That is start time. So if you want to make it, you just name the variable as start time. So this is where we are initializing. The same process will follow. When you go for creating arrays, we use np dot range. Now I would like to store the elements in the format of list only. In the above function, in the above example, we have to use range function because you take different objects over there, you take converted in list or anything. It's up to you because it's a sequence already. Because when you write a for loop, you always you always take range only. Why? It is a sequence, right? The same process. Now I'll try to take list of, I would like to take some million elements, let's say, because if I give less thousand or 10 elements, what is the meaning? It will take very less amount of time, right? So I just try to compare how much amount of time taken. So list of range of, let me give some huge values here. Let me try to give million. So units, tens, hundreds, thousands, tens, tens, lakhs, ten lakhs. So it's one million elements. Very good. So this is A is equal to list where I would like to perform some operation over here. What could be that operation? I would like to make sure b is equal to, I'll just try to multiply each element x into 5 for x in a, right? That's what I want to perform because when you print b, you could see the result. What do you, that is the result? Every element being multiplied with 5. That's a simple case because you already were, know about the comprehension technique, right? So where we, this is our expression, this is our value. But this is not our uh, target. Our target is to make sure how much amount of time is taken. So here, I'll end my logic. That means I want to see how much time is taken for this specific block of code. That is where you just make sure you begin the statement, you end it. Any piece of code, any model iteration, any other execution part, you just write the logic here, start time, end time, it will tell you how much amount of time is calculated. Just go for that. I'll use print. I'll try to take. I'll just make sure whether you go for formatting or anything. It's up to you. Let's try to use F string format. So I'll just try to mention time taken for execution. Because it, if you go with your local environment, it depends on your processor. And uh, that is the reason I'm using mainly Google Collaborator. So that I get the same result, you get the same result. If you are using a local Jupyter notebook, it is fine. 
I am there to help you out if you get any error over there. So, just I would like to, how do you find the difference? End time minus start time. So, this is where we stop. Stop iteration or stop the execution. That's where you could understand where we'll try to see the main difference. So, end time minus, you just mentioned start time. Because as we are using here, mainly f string format make sure you go with curly braces if you are if you are good at the simple print statement go ahead you need not worry so now even if you want to convert that thing into milliseconds it's up to you you just multiply that thing with the common logic right because generally you already know the simple point if you wanted to convert that thing into milliseconds you just multiply with thousand right so for converting into milliseconds so just i execute this and I see 0 0.14 seconds. It's very, very minute, right? For us, one, se one second is only very less. So this is for when we are trying to take away in the format of a list. Okay, 0 0.14 is very less, you think. But what happens if I try to go with the same logic? So I can just copy the same code. But now I'll create an array. Instead of a list, what we'll do? We'll just make sure a is equal to np dot a range or np dot array of it's up to you when you go for np dot array you need to create manually that's the reason i'm going for a range function this is array range most of the people will write arrange it's not a range it's a range it returns evenly spaced values we'll understand the main difference you need not worry so i would like to throw same number of elements it is one million so zero to six zeros one two three four five six right don't try to print it because this is in the comprehension way. If you want to multiply each and every element in array, what you can do? You can perform element wise, right? So you give b is equal to a into 5. That's it. Then go for n time. The same logic. You could expect. You will be surprised to see the result when you execute this. n time is equal to time dot time and time taken for execution. Now when I hit enter, you could see it's very, very less. 0.03 right that is how you could find the main difference when you go for a list it is 0.141 it's in the format of seconds it is 0.03 only for such huge amount right if you multiply with 10 i mean multiply with 1000 you get the result that is in the milliseconds you can do that but the main thing i want you to understand is how does the execution has been very less when you compared with numpy array so this is the main difference when you compare with memory, you could see how NumPy arrays are occupying very lesser memory and faster execution. That's where programming matters, right? Because if you try to create a list, suppose if you write like this, one, two, and if you try to make sure you define an another Boolean within it, true is your Boolean, and you write something like str in it. You already know, right, list can take, take any type of data. It's fine, right? What I can do is, suppose if I try to convert the same type to an array, that means I would give arr is equal to np dot array of our input is a, right? So that means when you give print of arr, you could see the difference because what happens if you are clearly observing over there, everything is converted it into string format because arrays, whenever we, whenever we declare array in any programming language, they are of same type. That is the key difference, right? So when you go for type of ARR, obviously it will be an n-dimensional array, right? But the main thing you should understand is list can take any type of data right whether it is integer float or character array it if you give any type of data it is converting that thing into same type that is a key difference and one more thing is whenever you go for arrays representation with array module let me just throw some other light which will give you other difference suppose i'm converting this thing to float okay you see the result over there you'll be surprised it will throw you integer exp argument expected it cannot take different type but when you have thrown the same thing to a numpy array it can take that's what we have seen now because it will uh, it will bind to the definition 
the definition of array would be to take same type of data. If you convert one thing, everything will be converted to other type. If you convert one thing to string, remaining to string. One thing to float, remaining everything to float. So this is how we have clearly understood the difference between list and numpy array when you go for execution point and when you go for memory comparison. Because with the built-in types, it is range function. With numpy array, it would be a range function, right? In the next videos, we will understand the different ways of creating numpy arrays. We'll be going for n-dimensional and we'll check some attributes within it. Shape, we have already seen size, item size and then we'll go for indexing concept which will throw some more light to you by relating this to matrices. Because generally when we work on matrices, we have the same kind of functions but in that is in mathematical point of view. This is into computing point of view, right? You treat this as numpy arrays. So, in this video, we have understood the differences between list and numpy. In the following video, we will understand how to create numpy arrays and check attributes within it. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed watching it. If you have liked our content, please do hit like button and do subscribe to our YouTube channel for more useful content and exciting updates. If you want to learn such practical content at an affordable cost with Microsoft certification and instructor support, please register at academy.codenan.com. You can also download app from Play Store as Codenan. Never hesitate to raise queries in the comment section and please do reply with your suggestions for more practical videos. We'll be happy to come up with it. Thank you.